Hi, welcome back to your Lakeside Quilt Making Arts. I have three things to address before we get into the construction of the center square of the Indigo, what is it, Indigo Light by Debbie Maddie of Teori Designs. We are working again today on moving the needle on one of the motor blockheads, and the one I'm working on this week is Blockheads 5, Group 2, Block 13, Indigo Light by um, Debbie Maddie. And I'm piecemealing my efforts through this week because I'm helping my son um, liquidate out the contents of a home, a duplex that he is selling. I was there again today. I made great progress. We met with the realtor today. Tomorrow we go and clean out the shed. So it's taking a lot of me. It's a huge diversion. So I'm just getting a little bit of time in the studio each day and sharing with you the progress I'm making. And this is what I will be doing here in this video is this section here the quarter square triangle, no, quarter, yeah, quarter square triangle, I believe is what it's called. Right here, this section here, you could, you make a little pinwheel out of it if you use your colors properly. But before we get to that, I really think this will go together pretty quickly because this is all of the fabric that we have left or these three, these three units here, these three pieces of fabric is all we have left. So I think it'll go together pretty quickly. We'll see, but I do want to mention three things. The first one, and I want to start with this, and that's you guys. Uh, as of today, underneath the title of the channel, there is a 1K for the number of subscribers. I reached the four digit category. There's 1,000 of you who have subscribed, more than 1,000 now, like 1,000 or two, I think. I've been trying to understand the emotions behind seeing that change happen today in the middle of my craziness that's taken me out of the studio to get that kind of reception from all of you. As I put it in the video that was released today, which will be yesterday as you're watching this, if you're watching it when it's released, it's, um, it's just kind of wild and crazy to have a foot in the door into this wonderful quilting community. And it's not something that I take for granted. I'm grateful for the opportunity to be here. I kind of view those 1,000 subscribers as kind of a people's choice awards as 1,000 of you saying, yeah, I kind of like what you're doing here. I want to see more. Go forward, young one. <laughs> but back to you guys. Thank you from the bottom of my heart for subscribing and giving me the encouragement to move forward with this channel and to continue to learn, continue to share. I uh, appreciate that. If I can be so bold, the only other thing I'd like to ask of you is to see more comments from you so we can do some real engagement with each other, right? That's where it really gets interesting. And that's what I'm looking for out of this channel is engagement so that we're all learning from each other and we're supporting others who are on a learning journey too. There are some fabulous teachers out there to learn from. And that leads me to uh, my second and third point that I wanted to make before we get into the construction of this. There are a lot of people we can learn from. And two of those people I want to talk about now. So the two people I want to mention is Nikki with Pink Cut Sew and Karen with um, Just Get It Done Quilts. Nikki did this wonderful, beautiful quilt. And Karen was showing how to do foundation paper piecing, which I have not done yet. I may just be a beginner, but I'm learning from a lot of different people. And I encourage you to do that too. So with all that said, let's get into, let's get into this. Well, let's construct a quarter square triangle. I don't understand. To, to me, it, you're building a square. So why are we calling it a quarter square triangle? The naming of these units kind of confused me. To me, what you're building here is a square. That unit will be a square. So why are we calling it a quarter square triangle? Does that seem odd to anybody else? Okay, let's get to working on our center square. First things first, I gotta take these and cut them in half into triangles. I'm gonna use two quarter triangles pieced together to make half of a square. And then this goes on the other side. I'll show you. Okay, I have my triangles made. The trick behind these, now it, let me just point out, it, 
The instructions say to press towards the darker fabric, but I'm kind of like an open seams these days, so that's what I did. I have three, almost four of these little dog ears trimmed off. The other thing is you gotta just kind of pay attention whenever you're placing your triangles together that you're putting your right angles, um, that you're putting your right angles side by side instead of putting your bias, your biased diagonal together. You don't wanna do that. That would end up with a completely different block. But making sure that this side of the triangle and not this side of the triangle was married up evenly. Even though it looks easy, you still had to put a little bit of thought in it to make sure it came out right. Okay, so I am losing steam. It has been a really big day. So I know that once I get this pinwheel made in the middle, that will be, I'll be calling it quits at that point because I still needed to trim down my flying geese and I just don't want to do that while I'm really tired. I want to, don't want to cut on anything while I'm tired, but I don't have to, right? Why do that? Where we're going to get to today is just getting that center square done. The hardest part's done. So we take this, this is our EF unit. We have four of these. Okay, so this is my D triangle, and it does say that this EF unit will be a little bit larger than this D triangle. This is how this goes together like this. Because this is my straight edges of this D uh, EF unit. And this is my bias edge there. We put the straight against the bias, and we'll sew that together line it all up properly, sew it together, and then we, will, then we will be trimming, and then we will have a split quarter square triangle. So what I'm doing to make sure that I have equal sides, that I'm equally getting this triangle inside this EF unit is I'm putting that tip in that seam right there, and then making sure that it's flush here. So it should give me the same amount on this side as it's giving me on that side. So I'm gonna set those together, get them sewn, and I'll show you what it looks like. Okay, true confessions. I'm having a hard time learning the Brother PS700 and getting in sync with pushing a button to make the machine go, the needle go up and down, versus using a foot pedal. And it takes my hand away from my fabric to do that. Right, just for a moment. And in that moment, your fabric can slip. Is it enough to matter? I don't think so because this is oversized, right? I'm gonna press it and see what I get. We'll see. And I really don't wanna take out stitches. So I wanted to show you, this is a three and a half inch square and that's the size that this unit is supposed to be when it's done. So what I've done is made sure that this little center, see that little circle where all those lines meet in the middle. I want to make sure that that one line is on this seam and I want to make sure that this tip of the three and a half inch square is on the seam and the same thing on this end and that the ruler covers all of the fabric. And it could be, there we go, now that it covers everything here. It's on that line and this point and that point is also on the seam. So I think we're good, we can cut that. And we rinse and repeat. We've got our little circle in the middle of where all of our seams come together. Our points of our ruler are on a seam. The strong bold line is on a seam. Hold it down and make our cuts. All right, we have two of these made. Just need to do two more. Okay, what we do now is we take this quarter triangle is going to be spinning, it's going to be our pinwheel. So we want to make sure that it's going in this direction, it's going clockwise. So this is going to be my bottom two pieces. Now just fold it over 
and I'm gonna sew that. This one would be going clockwise, right? And then this one would finish going clockwise. You can see that here. Sew those together, and we'll have a little pinwheel made out of split quarter square triangles. Okay, we almost have our pinwheel. This is our split quarter square triangle is what you call these units. And this is going to be our split quarter square triangle pinwheel. And before I sew these together, flip that over and sew it together, I want to show you something. On this one, I don't know what I was thinking, but I totally forgot to press the seam open here. But I did on this one. See how it looks different? And it lies so much flatter here than here. This is not bad because this is at least pressed open. And it is only, you know, this seam and this one and this one, you know, three seams come together, not five or six. But it does make a difference. Like you can't feel anything here, whereas you can with this. So I do like my open seams. I don't know why I didn't do it here. Now, we want that point to meet this point. That's what we gotta line up. So we're going to see where that point comes together. Put a pin right there straight through and it's gonna show you on this side where the point comes. And that's what you wanna put here too. And it should come out. Yes, it comes out right there. Make sure it goes in nice and straight and flush, not at a diagonal. Use that to hold it in place while you pinch it together. And then you get more pins. While you hold it together, you get more pins to go in it. Of course, I don't have them near me, do I? Holding it together, I'm going to take more pins to go on either side of that, to hold it in place. I've got my seams pressed open, so there's less bulk. This is just holding things together and keeping it in alignment for me. If I were to use that one to pin, as I turned it, to actually pin it, it would be pushing my fabric around. Now it can come out, it's done its job. The only thing I want to do now is just make sure that this stays flush here. Make sure our points lined up there. They do. I notice that my fabric is split here. I did not notice that until now. I don't know how that happened. Hopefully it's not more than a quarter inch. That is most unfortunate. I'm going to just hope and pray that falls inside my seam allowance. Kind of disheartening. It's not pressed open yet, but my little trick worked. I could probably have gotten my, I could probably put it back under the needle again. See the little bit of difference right there from that stitch line over to that little point? That makes a difference. In those points lining up that much. That's why it's good to start pinning from here and pay attention to how close you get. I think I'm going to put it back underneath the needle. I'm going to start from out here. Perfectly put together points. It's not pressed yet. It will be. I went back under the needle with it because when I originally did it, we weren't quite at the point. And it was just, you can't even, you can barely even see the difference between the two stitch lines. It's no more than the width of the thread that I took in when I went with my second line of stitches. And that made a difference of my points matching up. It was okay that I, in my book, it was okay that I went back over it because it was my original set of stitches. My machine had defaulted to a 2.5 length. And I like a finer, smaller length. You can see 
here that I've got, I think it's a 1. Yeah, 1. 1.6 that I'm working with now. And the original was a 2.5. I just prefer a tire stitch. All right, so you get your whole block put together and you find out you have overlooked a split in your fabric. What would you do? Hmm? Would you remake that whole unit? Of course, if it's going to show piece, show quilt, you probably would. But I am going to see is outside of where the point hits. So I'm going to leave it. I'm going to leave it. It's inside my quarter inch seam. I'm going to be thoughtful that it exists and make sure that I include it in the seam allowance. Are you guys ready to see this? Do you like it first? You see? I like it. Yeah, but there's more contrast with this than what we've got anywhere else. So that does concern me a little bit. How's that look from afar? I don't love it at all. I'm going to hold out final judgment until we get it all sewn together, though. This has to be uh, sized down, trimmed down, and then we put it together. I don't think I'm going to like it, though. This might end up being a pillow. I mean, it's a fine block. There's just a little bit stronger contrast than what I've had anywhere else, and I'm trying not to have a lot of that. I wasn't in love with the fact that I have a lot of contrast in this one, but it still seems marbleized, whereas this one doesn't right now. But again, it's not sewn together, and these pieces, these flying geese pieces, are not um, sized properly. So it's going to change. We're going to not get too discouraged just yet. You know what? I'm going to think about as I'm <laughs> finishing up here, and it's not about whether or not I like that block. I'm going to be thinking about you guys and the fact that I am at a thousand subscribers. I just don't even know how to process that. Seriously. I really don't. <laughs> it's like, okay, this is real now. It's going to take a little while to absorb that fact, honestly. So I'll think about how awesome that feels instead of how disappointed I am that this is not an immediate, oh, I love it. Because hmm. I'm not having that emotion for this. It's just a little too high contrast. I knew I was just kind of intentionally punctuating some color. And it might be that it will make sense eventually when we've got all the blocks put together and overall we have a marbleized effect. Inside of a marble, we've all seen our marbles. You get your variations of color. You get some hot spots of color. You get some areas where they're blended uh, and they kind of overlap and kind of swirl together so maybe that's what this is this is just our colors swirling together inside our marble yeah let's go with that thought for a little bit i can live with that guys i appreciate you being here i appreciate you subscribing liking sharing commenting connecting yes thank you for all the points of connection it means the world to me hope you guys are enjoying your stitching time too moving that needle every chance you get even little baby steps every day make a difference. We'll see you soon. Bye-bye.